This is example 384 from the book Rao, and this is air, air compression with an unbalance. We have the air compression mass 50 kilograms and is mounted on an elastic support and operates at a speed of 1000 RPM. It has an unbalanced mass of 2 kilograms at a radial distance or eccentricity of 0.1 meters from the axis of rotation. If the damping factor of elasticity support is zeta equals 0.1, determine the following. The springs constant of the elastic support, which transmit no more than 25% of the unbalanced forms to the foundation, and the magnitude of the displacement of the compression and force transmitted to the foundation in this condition, and the magnitude and the displacement of the compression and force transmitted to the foundation for the most critical speed. We have the mass of the compressor equals to 50 kilograms, the mass of the unbalance 2 kilograms, the eccentricity 0.1 meters, and the zeta, which is the damping ratio 0.1. The speed of rotation 1000 RPM, which if we want to express it in radians over seconds, therefore we multiply by 2 pi divided by 60, and we get 10472 radians over second. We get the equation of motion, and that's an equation of motion that we explain in the theory slides, and is the mass of the machine times acceleration plus constant of the damper times velocity plus constant of the springs times the displacement equals to the force of unbalance. The force of unbalance is the mass of the unbalance times the eccentricity times the speed of rotation squared, sine of omega t. For us, F0 is equal to Me omega squared. We know the response of this type of second order differential equation. The response will be equals to the force divided by the constant of the spring times the amplification factor sine of omega t minus a phase angle. The amplitude of the response then will be equals to the first term that we have here, right? The magnitude will be equals to Me over the mass of the machine times r squared amplification factor. The force transmitted to the foundation is equal to the force of the spring times the displacement plus the force of the damper, the damper coefficient times the velocity. Then we have the displacement that we just found and the eccentricity. And as you know, that we can compress that in a single sine by k squared plus c omega squared, square root of that, sine of omega t minus the phase angle minus a second phase angle. If we put this in terms of our dimensionless variables, zeta and r, it will be equals to me omega squared. Then we have the square root of 1 plus 2 zeta r, 20 the square divided by the term that comes from the magnification factor, square root of 1 minus r squared, that square plus 2 zeta r squared. Therefore, the magnitude of the transmitted force will be equal to the unbalanced force times the transmissibility coefficient tau. And we know that we want the transmitted force to be 25%, so 0 0.25 times the unbalanced force. We have then that the transmissibility factor will be 0.25%.
from the transmissibility factor. We know zeta, but we do not know r. So let's determine r. To do so, I will make the transmissibility factor equal to 2.25, and then that will be, I will expand this expression by squaring both sides of the equation, and we get 25 squared, and we get 1 plus zeta, 2 zeta r squared, that's equal to 25.25 squared, that multiplies 1 minus r squared, all that squared, plus 2 zeta r squared. And then we expand that and we get a four order polynomial. And that gives us two solutions for r squared. The first solution is r squared equals to 5.385. And the second solution gives us a negative number. minus 2785. It doesn't make any sense the negative number because it will give us a complex number for r, so we take the positive solution. Then we take the square root of that, and then we have that our r value, which is the frequency ratio, is equal to 2.32. And with that, we can calculate the natural frequency of the system because we are given the speed of rotation. We solve for the natural frequency, and the natural frequency will be the rotation frequency divided by r, which is 104.72 divided by 232. And the natural frequency then is equal to 45, 125 radians over a second. Since we are given the mass of the whole machine, which is 50 kilograms, we will use the value of the natural frequency to calculate our constant of the spring, which is the first question that we have been asked to calculate. So my constant of the spring will be natural frequency squared times the mass, and that gives me a value of 101,815.6 newtons over meters. Now that we have the R, we can use the expression that we have found for the displacement to find the displacement for the condition of there is a transmission of 25% of the force to the foundation. R is 232, and then we plug in that numbers in our expression for the dis magnitude of the displacement, which is the mass of the unbalance times the unbalance divided by the mass of the whole machine, R squared times the amplification factor. Please don't get confused with the two M's. One is the mass of the machine, and the other one is the amplification factor. The mass of the machine is 50 kilograms. Please introduce the values in the magnification factor. And the magnification factors, as you know, is 1 over square root of 1 minus r squared quantity squared plus 2 zeta r, all that square. And the amplification factor is 0 0.22676. That gives me an amplitude of 4.88 times 10 to the negative 3 meters, which is 4.88 millimeters. The magnitude of the transmitted force will be the unbalanced force times the transmittability factor. And we already know that the transmittability factor is 0 0.25. So we introduce the mass on the unbalance, which is 2, the eccentricity on the unbalance, which is 0 0.1, natural frequency squared, the R squared, 
times the transmittability factor, which is 0 0.25. That gives me a value of 548.3 newtons. That represents 25% of the unbalanced force. Then we have the displacement and the force transmitted for the most critical speed of rotation. And that will, for that we need to calculate the critical R. You remember that the critical R is equals to 1 over square root of 1 minus 2 zeta squared and then the critical value is equals to 1.0102. We plug in that value in R squared, the magnification factor, and that gives me 5.025. We plug in the values and gain an amplitude of 2 times 10 to the negative 2 meters, which is equals to 20 millimeters. As you see, the amplitude has increased considerable because we had 4.88 millimeters for the previous condition and now we have 20 millimeters. Now we calculate the transmitted force for this new R, and this is m e omega n squared r squared transmittivity factor. I plug in the numbers, and the R squared transmissibility factor is equals to 5.126. That gives me a value for the transmitted force of 2087.6 newtons. If we compare this value with the unbalanced force, We divide these two values, and I get that this ratio is 0 0.95. That means that 95% of the unbalanced force is transmitted to the foundation, in compared to the 25% that was transmitted when we had an R equals to 2.32. Here in this graph, we can see the, where the points are located. So the first graph is R squared times M, which gives me the amplification factor for the displacement. And the second graph is R squared to the transmissibility factor, which gives me the force transmitted the foundation when we, had, when we have an unbalance. For the critical value, we always will have a greater value for the displacement and a greater value for the force transmitted to the foundation. As you see, when we have values greater than square root of 2, then the transmitted force diminish if we have very little damping ratio. But if we have a bigger ramping ratio, force transmitted to the foundation will, will be bigger. To review what we did, first of all, we found the constant of the spring, and to do that, we used the transmissibility factor, found a four-order polynomial equation to find R right here. Then with that R, we were able to find the displacement and the force transmitted to the foundation, and then we found the displacement and the force transmitted for the foundation for a critical condition. And those you can see in this graph over here. This will be the position for R equals 232 and this will be the critical condition.